if you say you're going on a cruise, there's a good chance someone you know might spout a very common and definitely untrue myth about going on a Royal Caribbean cruise. Whether they're rooted in the old days of cruising or simply ignorant of what cruising is like right now, I'm dropping some Royal Caribbean truth bombs right now. Here we go. Hey everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and are you wondering what it's like to be on a Royal Caribbean cruise? Despite Royal Caribbean being rated as one of the top cruise lines in the world, there are still some myths that perpetuate despite a ton of evidence to the contrary. This confusion leads to misconceptions about what a Royal Caribbean cruise, and in many cases all cruises, are really like. So here's a look at some of the most common cruise myths out there and why they're just plain wrong. Let's start off with a really common one, the cabin is small. Even the smallest staterooms on a cruise ship are still probably larger than you think. Royal Caribbean offers staterooms of various sizes that run the gamut of price ranges and amenities. If your concern is that you're going to be stuck in too small of a room for your liking, try a balcony room or even a suite. Balcony rooms tend to be very popular choices and not nearly as much more to move up to than you might think. Suites, of course, offer the most living space, but as the name implies, it comes at a price. But if you can afford them, suites offer an incredible amount of living space on board. Regardless of which room you choose, though, the rooms tend to be larger than you think, and you will spend significantly less time in a cruise ship stateroom compared to a hotel room, so largely the size of the room doesn't matter nearly as much on a cruise ship as it may a hotel room. Next up, getting seasick. Oh, perhaps no other concern of a first-time cruiser can rival that of the fear of getting seasick on a cruise. Now, while getting seasick is a possibility, especially for those prone to motion sickness, there are so many easy remedies out there to combat it that you really shouldn't be overly concerned about it. There's over-the-counter medications you can purchase like Bonine, acupressure bracelets, and even a prescription patch to put behind your ear. There are also a variety of homeopathic treatments such as eating green apples, peppermint, or something containing ginger. If you're truly worried about it, your best bet is to take either the over-the-counter pills before the cruise begins and every day thereafter, or talk to your doctor about getting a prescription medication, but the bottom line is, more than likely, you're probably not going to get seasick, and if you do, it's really easy to treat. All right, our next cruise myth that we're going to tackle is you have to get dressed up on a cruise. While there are some classic films and television shows set on cruise ships, they all tend to show people wearing tuxedos and ball gowns in it gives the sense that a cruise is a seven-night senior prom sailing. Cruising on Royal Caribbean is very relaxed, and while there are dress codes, they only apply to the dinner in the main dining room and are very basic in nature. First and foremost, you can skip formal night by not dining in the main dining room for dinner. Even if you do want to eat in the main dining room, keep in mind that the required dress code is nothing close to fancy. Collared shirts and slacks for men, tie or suit is definitely optional and a cocktail dress or a pantsuit for ladies. There is no one inspecting your clothing as you enter to check for regality of your attire. On non-formal nights, the required attire is nothing fancy at all. Jeans are acceptable every night, along with polo shirts, blouses, or really anything else without holes in them. In addition, there are plenty of alternative dining spots on your roller cream ship that have casual dress attire requirements, but again, when you hear the word dress code, that applies to restaurants, not the dress code in the hallways and around the ship. The next Royal Caribbean myth we're going to tackle is that Royal Caribbean isn't the best cruise line for young children. When people look to vacation with younger kids like under 10 years old, Royal Caribbean tends to be in their blind spot out of concern that there's better choices out there. Now, Royal Caribbean offers a well-rounded approach to their children's programming, and there's a lot to do for kids of all ages on board. Children 6 to 36 months old are able to spend time in the ship's nursery, which is available on pretty much all ships now. The nursery is an extra cost venue that offers supervised child care during the daytime and is staffed by crew members with backgrounds in child care. Now, Adventure Ocean is the award-winning children's program available on all ships that encompasses ages 3 to 17 years old. Adventure Ocean is broken down by ages to ensure programming is appropriate for kids in each group, and kids can enjoy a great variety of supervised activities, including games, drawing, story time, crafts, video games, scavenger hunts, and more. On top of all that, Royal Caribbean recently revamped its Adventure Ocean programming on Oasis of the Seas and Freedom of the Seas with an all-new approach that will eventually make to the rest of the fleet. This update to Adventure Ocean combines new learning methods with technology and more opportunities for the kids to choose the sort of fun they want to engage in. But the bottom line is, if you're going on a Royal Caribbean cruise, it is a fantastic choice for families and especially for kids, and definitely don't look to another cruise line that's going to cost you like three times more just because you think they're synonymous with family fun Far from it, Royal Caribbean is a great choice for families of all ages. 
Another really common cruise myth, and this is not just Royal Caribbean, this is pretty much any cruise ship out there, the ships are crowded. The modern cruise ship's Royal Caribbean sails are designed to help spread out crowds to ensure better traffic flow, as well as prevent the logjam of people that some think are always on a cruise. Just like in any land-based casino, hotel, or theme park, yeah, there can be occasions where crowds come together, such as when a show ends or returning to the ship from a shore excursion, but you will not go on Royal Caribbean feeling like you're surrounded by people all the time. Ironically, the largest cruise ships, like the Oasis and Quantum class ships, are the best ones at spreading guests out to prevent crowding. Royal Caribbean knew when they designed these ships that they needed to ensure that there was plenty of space for everybody and they have to offer the most deck space, bars, clubs, and restaurants to accommodate everyone. So no, going on a cruise doesn't mean you're going to be clamped up in some kind of sardine can. Ha! It's going to be a great cruise and you're not going to feel crowded at all. Now this next myth definitely triggers me and that is people fall overboard on cruises. This myth is rooted in news reports that often involve poorly written headlines. While there have been, relatively speaking, very few people that have ended up in the ocean following being on a cruise ship, they are all cases of jumping off the ship or victims of being thrown off by someone else or just being somewhere they shouldn't have been in the first place. The notion you can be minding your own business, slip or bump into something and fall backwards over a railing into the ocean is simply not true. It is not physically possible. Royal Caribbean designs its ships with high balcony railings, plenty of warning signs and partitions to keep guests safe. So despite what you may read in the media or see on TV, don't believe it. It's just, again, a case of bad headlines meant to get, well, basically clickbait. So stay away from that. Don't avoid a cruise because of it. You're not going to fall overboard. Our next myth about Royal Caribbean cruises that is totally untrue is you'll be bored. Every so often, I'll hear from somebody who's never cruised before, and they refuse to go on a cruise because they imagine being, quote unquote, stuck on the ship and being bored. Royal Caribbean cruises are packed with tons of activities, entertainment, and things to do in addition to the fun places around the world you'll be visiting. Depending on the ship you pick, you can enjoy rock climbing, water slides, zip lining, ice skating, laser tag, dance parties, play trivia games, and much more. The best way to convey just how much there is to do on a Royal Caribbean cruise is to read a past cruise compass. Cruise compasses are the daily activity sheets distributed to all guests on board. You will quickly see there's a plethora of things to do on board that will leave you anything but bored. The next myth about cruising that's totally untrue is you have to eat with random people. Some people are concerned they'll be forced to dine with people they don't know, which is or was a cruise tradition rooted in the past. While dinner in the main dining room does still offer this option, there are plenty of alternatives that offer more flexible options. First and foremost, it is really easy to request a main dining room table just for your family. All you have to do is send an email to Royal Caribbean a couple weeks before your cruise, request it, you should be no problem. In addition to that, Royal Caribbean offers My Time Dining, which is a flexible dining option that does not have assigned dinner times and seating. Instead, when you arrive, you're seated with just your family. In addition to all that, you can just skip the main dining room altogether and dine at a specialty restaurant where seating is always just for your party. There are complimentary casual venues that offer plenty of seating that you can pick out in addition, so if you don't want to spend any extra money, you can still eat by yourself. Now let's get back to a Royal Caribbean-centered myth, and that is older and smaller ships are not as fun. If you watch a Royal Caribbean television commercial, you'll spot plenty of B-roll that features Royal Caribbean's newest cruise ships, leading some to question why anyone would sail the older ships. Royal Caribbean recognized that their newer ships offered a big advantage and engaged in a series of upgrades and enhancements to bring some of the more popular features from the big ships to their existing fleets. Not only has programs like the Royal Amplified and the Oasis Sizing added new dining locations, entertainment, and activities to older ships, these ships are also priced extremely well compared to their newer sister vessels. Royal Caribbean's fleet of ships are not like when you buy a car and let it languish with the same features as when you bought it. They are constantly looking for opportunities to bring great choices to these ships and you will still find plenty to do on board. And the last Royal Caribbean myth, and again, this is probably true of all cruise ships and one of the worst ones out there is that cruise ships are a floating Petri dish. Oy vey. This notion is the single most infuriating and downright incorrect summary of a cruise ship. No doubt you've read headlines that make cruise ships seem like they are the single greatest source of spreading disease, especially during the current global health crisis. While cruise ships do carry a risk of spreading any germ or disease, just like any public venue in the world, by the way, they are not the super germ incubators that the media has made them out to be. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control, CDC, reports that only 1% of norovirus, which is a gastrointestinal illness, Cases came from cruise ships, while nearly all the cases came from restaurants, nursing homes, schools, and prisons. 
Royal Caribbean takes the health of its passengers seriously and continuously works on new policies and procedures to keep everybody safe. Hand sanitizer stations and enhanced onboard sanitation are just some of the tools often employed by the cruise line to greatly reduce the risk. In light of the current pandemic, Royal Caribbean is working on crafting a new solution to allow its ships to sail while minimizing the risk to guests and crew. The cruise line also hired its first public health and chief medical officer and its healthy sail panel has released a new strategy of policies and procedures for keeping guests, crew, and of course the cruise ships themselves safe for everybody on board. The bottom line is the vast majority of people who go on a cruise do not get sick and it is anything but a quote unquote floating petri dish. It is no worse and probably even safer than a lot of other places you'll visit in your daily routine. So there you go. There are some big myths out there about cruising and Royal Caribbean that are just not true. I would love to hear in the comments, which myths have you heard about? Which of these have you actually experienced yourself? And let me know what you think about some of these myths that are out there. I always enjoy hearing a good story about how these myths kind of get started. And of course, while you're down there below our video, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel and turn on your notifications. So that way YouTube will let you know when I have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.